Hi there guys, it's been ages since I've made a video, but I have recently gotten a question from Julian Tan and he's asked, Hey Tetra Carbon, I have an accounting theory test on the reaction of capital markets to financial reporting. I'm not sure what latest issue would the lecturer ask, but it is a case study question and I don't know how to answer it. Okay, look, there are a whole bunch of things that can be answered by capital markets research. So I just want to point out the very basics here. What is capital markets research and how does it work? Because it's basically going to become my own area of research and indeed it's probably the largest area of research that's most commonly used amongst most academic accountants. So it's not hard to imagine any stock market you know, ticker looking something like this. So we have the price of the stock across a time variable here. And most of the time we'll have the stock price will go up and the top price will go down. And if something happens here, so there's some release of bad information, what will happen to the share price? Well, if there is some bad information, clearly that would be bad for profits and therefore push the value of the stock down, right? So what we have here is a relationship between information and the share price. And obviously there would be the reverse if there was any good information. So if the next day there was some good information about that particular stock, what will happen is that the stock will of course increase in value. However, again, it's the same information uh, share price relationship that we have where information will lead to either an increase or decrease in future profitability and therefore will increase or decrease the amount of uh, dividends that a shareholder can receive in the future and so that would be impounded into the share price today, essentially as soon as that information is released. However, we have a small problem here and that is we can't actually observe information directly. You see, there is an information data uh, divide here where data is just simply a bunch of facts, but information is actually useful. So how do we know what news out there or tweets or random things on Reddit out there will actually affect share prices? Because a lot of the stuff that's in the media, whether that would be social media or traditional media, like for example, the Financial Times or the Australian Financial Review, how do we know whether that is new news? A lot of it is simply repeating old news. And of course, old news we would expect, if there were efficient markets, to be already impounded into the share price as we go along. Clearly, only it's the new news that will affect the share price. So, we have a problem because information is actually what we want to know about. But we don't know which information is actually useful. However, while we can't observe information, we can observe the share price. We can measure it accurately, to the second even, and we can track it over a couple of days. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this relationship between information and share price and turn it on its head. What we're trying to do with capital markets research is say, okay, given the fact that we have a share and we're saying that some piece of information was released at time zero, and the share price went down, then we would infer backwards that that information existed, however, and that it was bad information indeed. However, if we conduct an experiment, some information is released, such as, uh, the, and the information could really be anything at all. It could be the release of a sustainability report. It could be the announcement of a takeover offer. It could be uh, the news that the CEO has quit. It could be news of a new client. Whatever it is, we're going to look for that event and then we're going to ask ourselves a scientific hypothesis and that is, when some event happens, is it information? Is it going to impact upon what the shareholders perceive as value to the firm? And we're going to predict that, you know, if the information is bad, say for example, um, the shareholder, the, the, the company we're looking at has just announced a takeover of another company. And we perceive that oftentimes, in fact, the vast majority of times, that takeover offers that from the, the company that's doing the takeover is usually value destroying. So we might have a hypothesis to say that we predict 
that the share price will actually go down in value. And then what we'll do is we'll go and uh, go to the market, collect thousands of companies across many years, and we're gonna conduct this experiment many times over. And we can see that on the average, whenever this particular event happens, that the share price does in fact go down, then we can say, well, there was information value here. That our hypothesis in this particular case, that this particular takeover announcement would destroy share value, it does in fact contain negative information, that is negative to, to the shareholders. So, this is the link about what capital markets research is trying to get at. And your question, Julian, is really uh, what sort of issues would we research using capital markets research? And, and the short answer is anything that affects share value, right? So one area that I'm particularly interested in is how CEOs and CFOs pay remuneration links back to uh, sustainability and carbon emissions. However, it could literally be anything that could impact upon share value. Uh, it could be uh, takeover announcements. It could be, uh, does historical cost accounts have more of an impact than uh, inflated accounts, which was the original piece of research by Ball and Brown that kicked off this whole market research thing in the first place. So your question is, is sort of like, what issues apply to capital market research? Use your imagination. It, it, there are so many things that can be researched using this tool. But capital markets research uh, is, is one of the, the, the biggest areas in accounting and finance research. And it's really, really fascinating stuff. But it does require very heavy statistical knowledge. Um, and it's, it's certainly the, the sort of things that are populating our A-star and top-notch academic journals out there. Honestly, I think it's a great system and I'm learning a lot about it myself through my own research. Anyway, Julian, thanks very much for this question. I hope this has answered your question sufficiently. Uh, if you actually need to have a look at um, uh, what sort of issues are affected, Simply Google search any of the top tier journals and you will find out pretty quickly, gosh, there is a lot that we can look at using this method. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Philip Wong. Happy studies, guys.